David. David Pendleton. Good morning, MZ. Hi, David Pendleton. Hi there. Okay. Uh, where's Dave, Dave Michaels? He's Dave, not here today, huh? He is on the phone right now. Oh, uh, he is? And I'm going to bring him in. Oh, okay. Can I bring him in? You got it. You I see think, him there? I think I can bring him in. Okay. All right. Uh, I think I can bring him in. Can I bring him in? Dave Michaels. Good morning, MZ. How are you? Good. I understand that you could be better. Yeah, well, you know, um, there was an unexpected uh, occurrence this weekend and with one of our pets. So I am not going to be in the Dave cave today. I'm going to be instead hanging out with the kids and, and our pets, and we're going to be just kicking back. But I would encourage anybody who does want to um, pick up Longevity products this week to go to uh, kseohealth.com. You can make your purchases there and get it delivered to your house. Or, you know, I'll be back uh, sometime next week, probably Tuesday, Monday. Uh, uh -huh. But, yes, I will not be in the Dave Cave today, so if you want to stop by, today is not the day to do it. Instead, try Monday or Tuesday. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah, Dave, sorry to hear that. Hope everything will be it'll turn out okay. Okay, MD. All right. Take care. All the best. Have you a, too. Have, Bye. A, have a good one. Okay. Um interesting program today uh that we have shaping up um but right now let's start the show officially good morning a brighter day is here good morning may we bring you cheer we've got time we've got tunes we've got time tunes and temperate too get up and go it's today you know on Radio. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to KSCO's Saturday special. Yeah, and uh, we're going to be on the air until 12 noon today, as we typically are. We're going to be covering two topics, one in hour number one and one in hour number two. And Amy, welcome. You're here, here too, right? Welcome again, every KSU listen. Most intelligent people on earth. Yes, the most intelligent people uh, in the world. Okay, now, um, <clears throat> let's see if our guest is, uh, is, uh, is, is here with us. Guest. <laughs> I'm not sure the host is with us. You're right. You're you're absolutely I, I, right about the that. The host is with you, but um, if people could only imagine, you know, chaos. It's you. You sound very subdued today. That's because there's chaos going on in your brain, isn't there, MZ? So much of it, it's unbelievable. This is. I I I want you to take a stress pill, and you know, remember in uh, 2001, take a stress pill, Dave. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Cool out. Um, I, 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 I hate being in your situation, and you're lucky that you're with an old buddy who, who understands, you know, what's going on. People are wondering, what the hell are they talking about? So let me, let me set the stage while you recuperate, and, and Amy, you just, you stand uh, behind him and be ready to, uh, administer CPR <laughs> if it's necessary. Um... I have a new song out that with, with the group Gun Hill Road that I, I happen to have the honor of being a member of. Did anybody say who that you're Michael Harrison? People should know your voice by now, but in case they don't, that's who you are, right? You know something? You're absolutely right. For a moment there, I forgot who I was. <laughs> See, you're discombobulated, too. It's not no, just me. I, I'm, I'm able to fake... A lack of discombobulation <laughs> better than you are. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, not to mention intense anger. No, I'm not. I'm yeah. not. I'm not angry at all. I'm a little disappointed. Now, now people are wondering what's going on. Here's the, here's the here's the point. I'm Michael Harrison. I've, I'm I'm on the station every um, every Friday at uh, at 6 p.m. with the Michael Harrison rap. I've hosted shows here. I've been on this show with MC. I'm the uh, publisher of Talkers Magazine, and, um, and, and I'm extremely interesting and colorful. Exactly. That being, exactly. That being said, uh, the, the, the plan for today's show was for MZ to play for you a new song. And I, I will. Will you? I will. I, Richard B. Luther II, our esteemed engineer, is, is looking over my shoulder, and he's going to save the day. 
Oh, then he's gonna, we he, going to we're going to figure out. We're, no, 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 no. Go ahead and, and set it up for us, okay? Because oh, okay, I was going to do is, that anyhow. I mean, you know what this is? Even though you and I are both spritzing and stressed out over the situation that we're dealing with, um, this is great radio from a standpoint of it's live, it's local, and we're dealing with a situation that, um, you know, is, is bugging us because it's not going the way we planned it. Um, basically, we're trying to figure out a way to play a song for you folks that, we, that, he, that MZ does not have and that I don't have the, uh, the ability to send to him. I'm 3,000 miles away from MZ, even though we sound, you know, through the, the amazing technology of um, digital broadcasting, we sound like we're in the same room, but we're, we're separated by, by a okay. continent. Now, I think we can play it right now. Are, are we ready? To, have you set it up? I haven't even listened no, to what no, you've I been haven't. saying. I, I've been milking it. I've been doing what we call in talk radio vamping. Okay. So, so hang on. Uh, you know, we don't have a commercial break, right? I mean, no, there's no, no. Right, good, good, good. Let's. You, I think let's, I can play it now just by going to kfco.com. When I went to my email, ah, it's and there, right? It's it, right on your website. It's right on our website, and I got there, and so, and and I'm right where it says play it. And Richard, don't go away. Don't go away to make sure. Uh, should I play it now, Michael? Okay, let me introduce it. Let me introduce it real fast, and then and then we'll play it again at the end of the conversation. Okay. And 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 I'll. Uh, this is called Idiots. It's a song by the group Gun Hill Road. I am. Uh, Road. Four guys: uh, Steve Goldrich, Paul Reich, Brian Coonan, and yours truly, Michael Harrison. We have a video on YouTube that is extraordinary, produced by my son, Matthew B. Harrison, and it's about the dangers presented to our society by the widespread pandemic of idiocy, which is going to tear down our democracy if we don't turn it around. Now you can play it. Hopefully. I'm the lead singer talker. Hey, it's working. on a holiday for many folks every day. Spewing words of fear and hate makes our culture second rate. Let's start out with easy stuff, then the stuff that's far more tough. Here at home and overseas, ignorance is the real disease. Idiots walk among us. They're lazy, lazy, lazy. Their speech is often hazy. Idiots talk among us. Never ceases to amaze me. Idiots talk among us. Tries me crazy, crazy, crazy. Crazy, 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 crazy. They cherry pick and reaffirm half baked dumb ideas. Agree with almost anything that feeds their hate and fears. Blaming others for their own damn lack of vision. They buy the crap that sold them from the merchants of division. Idiots walk among us. They're lazy, lazy, lazy. Idiots talk among us. Their speech is often hazy. Idiots talk among us. Never ceases to amaze me. Idiots talk among us. Tries me crazy, crazy, crazy. Right, blue or red. It pays to have an open mind, but not an empty head. Life is full of mysteries, don't mean to sound aloof. But knuckleheads seek victory at the expense of truth. Idiots walk among us. They're lazy, lazy, lazy. Idiots talk among us. Their speech is often hazy. Idiots talk among us. Never ceases to amaze me. Idiots talk among us. Drives me crazy, crazy, crazy. Crazy, 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 crazy. Idiots walk among us. They're 
lazy, lazy, lazy. Idiots talk among us. Their speech is often hazy. Idiots talk among us. Never ceases to amaze me. Idiots talk among us. Drives me crazy, crazy, crazy. Crazy, 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 crazy. Crazy, 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 crazy. Crazy, 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 crazy. The truth is not a mystery, if only you know history. Crazy, 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 crazy. Crazy, 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 crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. <laughs> well... well. You milked, it, you milked that right down to the last little note. Yeah, yeah I never heard, listened that far before. Oh, my goodness. Uh, Amy's been grooving to the music the whole time, right, uh, right, Amy? Yeah, I like this song. I think it really it is among us. You are one of the MC. Oh, oh I am? Okay, yeah, you're right. It's, tr it's true. <laughs> we all are idiots. But, I, I, I mean, I, this song is, <sighs> is offensive to stupid people. Uh, not to the left or the right. The left and the right both get their... Well, no one should it. be offended uh, who's listening now because, no, you know, no, for 32 years we've refused to allow stupid people to listen to KSCO, and we've very strongly enforced that rule. I think that that's one of the best things about the station, that you have, um, have that stupometer uh, that um, just makes the station disappear in people's radios if they don't have a certain level of brain energy that, um, that comes out. Yeah, it's amazing this digital era we're in. But um, no, actually, truthfully, I do not believe that um, this song is insulting to people that listen to talk radio. I want to back it up by saying it's a song that was developed to be heard on talk radio because it doesn't fit any music radio format out there. And music radio is so paralyzed by its own paranoia that, you know, God forbid it should play something that its listeners don't expect. Um, you know, this is definitely out of the box. But... Um, no, people that listen to talk media, talk radio, talk television, read newspapers, follow the news, they may have ideas you disagree with, and some of them may not be as bright as others, but compared to the general population, the smartest people in America listen to talk radio. and They're more likely to vote, they're more likely to know who the president and the vice president are, they may even know who their congressman or city councilor is. But the, the hordes, the masses of people that don't have a clue about what's going on and buy into snippets of reality that are cherry-picked by uh, whomever is trying to influence them, uh, politically and otherwise, these people are dangerous. They're dangerous. Uh, you can't have a democracy without an, uh, an educated, intelligent population and votership. And, and, and we're facing that right now. There's lunacy all across Is it getting worse? I think it is. Yeah. I, I, I do think there are very bright people. I mean, my gosh, there are scientists and there are engineers and there are, there, there are tremendously bright people. So again, I'm not talking about them, but I think that uh, per capita, and this is what's so amazing about this particular era that we're living in, the digital era, in which collectively we have more information than we as a society, as a species, have ever had. But proportionate to each individual person, the average person knows less in proportion to how much we collectively know than ever before. Um, and that's... Interesting. That's, I haven't thought of that, but I'm think, thinking about it now, and I think you're correct. Yeah. I mean, there was a time when you would go to a wise person on the hill, and he or she, uh, usually back in those days, he, would know almost everything that the human race knew. <laughs> they, would, they, were, they were called, you know, prophets. They were called rabbis, priests, um, shamans. But, but now everybody just, you know, think about your doctor. Your doctor probably knows how to fix, you know, your, your, um, your colon or your, or your eye or your ear, uh, but nothing else. Um, we're, we're specialists, and that's the intelligent people. The stupid people specialize in nothing. They don't know a lot about anything, and they don't even know a little bit about a lot. Uh, I don't mean to sound elitist, but, man, this really is, is, a, is a, it's irritating as hell, and the song is about that. So, okay. so, Michael, oh. you say that this um, sound doesn't fit any form of a musical form? 
M musical ra music radio is very hung up today, and that's uh. one of the reasons why music radio no longer influences the music industry or our musical tastes. Music radio is hung up on its formats. It's very hung up on um, sound. Every song sounds basically the same. Oh. Uh, very much like very much like news talk radio is hung up on whether or not conservatives or liberals are listening, and they it's it's called the daily dance of affirmation. In music radio, it works that way. And this song is, you know, this song is out of the box. But this song was made, this song was made for talk radio. And um, I'm having a ball with it. It's getting played all over I the country. I think it's going to be very popular, as long as you say it didn't fit any form. So it's a free well, it doesn't form really matter, it Amy. It doesn't matter. It's very popular, I guess. It, it, it doesn't <laughs> matter because uh, people don't go to music radio to hear new music mm -hmm. or, or, or hits anymore. I don't, need, I don't know why they go to music radio at all. I mean, you have to wait 15 minutes, 7 minutes, 8 minutes between songs with commercials and clutter. So that's, that's a whole other story. I'm not here to bash music radio. I'm just pointing out that it was... What, what, what's interesting about this song, among many things, is that it was designed for talk radio. I mean, that, what a profound concept. A song designed for talk radio. And um, I'm happy to say Talk Radio has responded to All it. All right, now you just uh, released this. Uh, we actually played a, 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 an advanced Before, version. No, yeah. We played, did we play or did Michael just send yeah. it? I forgot. It played. Yeah, we played it on the air yeah, here, I, I don't know, that. a mm -hmm. month or two it, ago, right? It's officially yeah. released um, seven days ago. Eight days ago. And in that time, in that time, uh, what have you learned? What have you learned about the I've learned, I've tool, learned, okay? I've learned that uh, people, um, that there is a great commonality politically, and, uh, and I'll bring it to politics right now because we're on a news talk station and most of the listeners expect to hear commentary about politics, and politics is a part of this, that there's a great unanimity among the left and the right about radicals and stupid people across the board about ignorance. Stupid is a nasty word. Ignorance. Ignorance is the disease. And that um, the left and the right both do not like the people that embarrass them. And uh, this is going on. This is a song that brings people together as opposed to one that splits them. And that alone, I think, is a significant oh, accomplishment. Oh, yeah. I mean, if there... I, I can't think of anything that's needed more than than um, unitedness instead of divisiveness, <laughs> you know. Well, we, we, we are the United States of America. Oh, I was thinking we become the divided states of America. <laughs> well, the, the divided states of America is a very dangerous place to be. And, um, you know, the old saying, it's a cliche, but it's true. United we stand, divided we fall. Not the USA, the USA. And, and, and we shouldn't be united to the point that we are all marching in lockstep. You see, the whole idea of remaining united while preserving the tenets of free speech requires intelligence, abstract reasoning, and goodwill. You, you, you can't get into a situation where you sacrifice truth for victory. Once you start doing that, you're in deep trouble, and that's what's happened in our country. So um, we have to be united, but that doesn't mean... And, 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 and Amy will know about this with her roots in China. You don't want to become China or Russia where you're, where you're in lockstep, where, where, where there's one central authority and you go to jail if you say the wrong thing. Uh, that kind of unity is, is the pendulum has gone way too far. That's not the kind of unity. What I'm talking about is unity of spirit, unity of goodwill with the recognition that a large enterprise such as the United States of America, China, Russia, India, any of these major countries that have all types of ethnic and demographic groups in it, that you have to be unified in your desire to hear people out, to let people speak their minds, to take into consideration what their point of view is based on what shoes they're standing in, what is their life experience, how do these issues affect them, and then you've got a United States of America with a First Amendment that operates in good health, meaning we can put up with each other's different points of view and not necessarily demonize every damn thing that comes along. How could, ever, how could one side or the other be so bad? 
that every single issue is weaponized and politicized and demonized. Think about that. Does that make sense? No. I'm sorry to go off on a rant. Well, it doesn't make sense. So what are you going to do about it? Um, con try to continue to be what we've always been uh, for almost 32 years, a voice for everyone mm -hmm. and uh, everyone who chooses to use it, right? Yeah, it's and so important to have a different voices, you know, from well, my and background. And have, yeah, Amy and I talk about that a lot. Yeah, because in, in becoming a one individual, you have an individual thing think and then you had to hear a different voice if you grew up only hear one voice so you're being brainwashed you cannot be independent think you don't think basically your brain's washed just yeah. only one one voice so important have a different voices yeah and 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 so you know back to your question mz about you know what have i learned i learned that um there's a great hunger not only in in the center but on the left and the right for a more open and understanding dialogue and one of the problems and if you heard the newscast um, uh, during the 10 o'clock news yeah um, it said that uh, new surveys indicate that most people do not trust the media when it comes to politics yeah. and that and that number yeah. is rising I don't know if you heard that it grabbed yeah. my attention yeah um, because the media wittingly and unwittingly is targeting people to give them what they think their preconceived notions already are. It's, again, the daily dance of affirmation. You know, oh, you're listening well, to our station, you're listening, you're reading our newspaper, we're going to tell you the news that conforms it, to your it goes, desires. It goes back to the um, destruction of uh, journalism. There's no such thing as journalism anymore. Everything is just, they call it, like, they call it journalism. They call it journalism on CNN. They call it j journalism on MSNBC and on Fox. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it's not journalism. Yeah. No, it's to a be journalist, you tell the truth. You know, mm -hmm. I think I came in nineteen early nineteen eighties. That time, I still have some uh, investigative reporter or some. I really like those program. Then gradually, then nobody, nothing, and uh, maybe they just invite some expert talk about it, uh, but not really go there to investigate anything. Mm -hmm. There's no more disappeared. And, and, and it's a problem, and um, part of it is because of the commercial nature of, of media today. Um, all media, whether it's um, commercial media or public media, depends upon um, advertising and, um, or contributions. And it has to conform to the wishes of the advertiser or the contributors. Uh, in terms of advertising, it depends upon ratings, how many people... How many eyeballs, how many eardrums, how many clicks, how many listeners, how many readers do you have? And that depend, and, and based on that, it, it will determine how much money you make. And what's happened is um, it's more, they go after the ratings and the revenue more than they do necessarily light or truth. Now, to have the government step in to monitor this or to have big business do it or big tech... And, and try to be the arbiters of truth so that the media is, has its feet held to the fire, that remedy, that medicine is worse than the illness. Because when the government starts telling the media what to say and what not to say, I'd rather have a bad media than government regulation on that level. So we're caught between the government on one side, which is all about power, and the media on the other side, which is all about money. How do we find a way to err on the side of the media, but get the media to have goals that are not totally in search of the almighty dollar? This is the challenge. Well, you've got people like Zuckerberg, who was in the news uh, big time this week uh, with his um, stunning, I kept hearing that word, stunning uh, interview with uh, Joe Rogan today, um, this week about how the FBI uh, alerted him to um, the necessity to control um, uh, misinformation 
that was about to be uh, unleashed on our country through Russia, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you know what I'm talking about, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not yeah. just, yeah. And, and I, I don't, th this is going to sound like I'm feathering my own nest or patting myself on the back or something, but I think there needs to be more stations like KSCO that are a voice for everyone. Well, Instead that's because you're an independent owner. There was once a time when there were thousands of such stations across the country, but unfortunately today, uh, after consolidation, most of the media is owned by a handful of very, very corporate, gigantic companies in which uh, if a, a CEO went before the stockholders or a major executive went in front of the board of directors and said, well, we really did a good job this week of enlightening the public, they would lose their job. That, that, that's not what they even think about because that's the way big corporate power is. Any concentration of organized humanity is dangerous, whether it's big business, big government, um, big media, or, or I dare say big religion. Um, they, they have to be kept in checks and balances. You, as an independent person who lives in the community that you broadcast to, you have to face your neighbors. You have to have a certain amount of pride and concern for the feelings of your constituents and the people that, that live in your region because you're there. And this is your, this is your baby. It's more than just... And um, if we got bought out by some big media company, mm -hmm. that would disappear, right? Like it has for so it, many it, other it, communities. It, 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 that's the case. Now, I, I, I am not anti my own industry. I'm a, I'm a trade publisher. I just am very, very um, candid. I don't like to say I'm honest. I'm candid about the problems that I see in it. And, you know, considering I've been doing this for decades and still uh, kept around, I guess there are people within our industry that feel this way. And um, I ultimately think that if you do good for the people and you really do bring to the table um, wisdom in terms of how you position yourself because there should be conservative and liberal media there should be there's nothing wrong with a newspaper being conservative or liberal it's just how honest you are in presenting that perspective yeah. but when you suddenly are at war with their, where we have culture wars uh, then then you see you know they say all's fair in love and war well when you have culture wars all's fair in culture war means you can lie means you can cheat means you can demonize, goes back to the rant I had before. You can start to play in a way that no longer seeks truth, but rather seeks victory. And that's where we are right now. And that ultimately is a problem on two levels. One, it's a cultural problem. We have a problem with a toxic culture that we've developed over the last 10, 15, 20 years, I think. And the other problem is, and this is a major issue, and it's back to school week, our educational system is dysfunctional. We, we, can't, we cannot decide anymore on what, is the real, what are the real basics of a critical thinking education versus indoctrination. Well, we've got to get our act together about that or the, the country's going to fall apart. It will rot from within. I have a question. So the Constitution is guaranteed the freedom of speech. So what will guarantee the Constitution? Who you just, you just, you, what, you, what your question, your question is absolutely brilliant. It's like what happened before the Big Bang. It's a, it's a brilliant question. And the one thing that we should be learning from what's going on in this country is that what we call democracy and what we call the Supreme Court and what we call Congress and we call the presidency and what we call the Constitution are extremely fragile. They're fragile. They could disappear in one gener. I think Ronald Reagan said that. We're always one generation away from tyranny. And that's why education is so important. And that's why we have to approach education with the same type of honesty as we, um, as we would hope that we um, uh, embody as human beings in our own daily lives. Does our, honest education exist these days? I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not in So school. those universities, they are getting lots of money from a CCP. You know that all the I found out lots of a university I used to like, but that just totally changed because that of money. That, that money. wouldn't surprise they bought me. by the money. I find most of the universities and colleges that I deal with today, and 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 I deal with a lot of them, and some of them are quite fine. Again, I, I am not um, indicting an entire, uh, you know, 
culture and industry. But I find troublingly that your average college today, as opposed to, say, 50 years ago, its primary interest is raising money. Its primary interest is, is, is big bucks. And they don't look at the students as students. They look at them as customers. And they want the customers to be happy. And students are past, and students are, are uh, this whole touchy-feely thing, this whole woke thing, uh, is destroying education in America, making the colleges extremely wealthy, breaking the backs of people trying to pay for college, whether it's the, the students or their parents, and um, setting colleges off in a biased direction that is as dangerous as the media. Uh, that's biased. So I agree with you, Amy. I think that um, they're money-grubbing institutions. Yeah, I, I just because I was said of my um, the trust, I want to donate the money to the university, and uh, so number of us. But I found out that recently, in those universities, they receiving lots of money from uh, CCP, Chinese Communist Chinese Party. Chinese Communist yeah. Party. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's a that's a our, our relationship with China is a major issue. Now, I want to I want to swing back, if I may, to the to the song, and the video that's attached to it, which the, is available at ksco.com. That's right, right. First it, thing that you see. Right, right on the homepage, ksco.com, folks. Uh, please, please check it out uh, because we we put a tremendous amount of work into this, and we're not making any money for this. This is not a commercial venture, as I mentioned before. There's no real way to make any money in 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 making music like this, but the message is very important, and it is fun and entertaining. On the video, it ends. With, uh, I guess I'm a bit of a spoiler here, but what the hell? It ends with nuclear bomb going off in a major city as the result of idiocy. And right after that, when the horns are all breaking up in like a Sergeant Pepper fashion, there are two Chinese businessmen looking and pointing and laughing at the viewer. And, um, and, and uh, you know, Amy, I think you'll, uh, you yeah. must have seen it, Amy. It's that, that, that communist China, and boy, when you talk about China, you've got to really be clear. We're talking about communist, communist China, China, not Chinese people. And, and, and I get very nervous whenever I say bad things on the radio about the communist party in China, because should idiots happen to hear it, they'll go, Chinese people are no good. And then they, and it starts all of this. Yeah this hatred against in innocent, freedom-loving, pro-American Chinese people who are here to seek freedom from those rascals running China. Um, it, it ends with Chinese people laughing at you, pointing and laughing <laughs> as all of the different scenes uh, throughout the video show what a bunch of jerks so many people are. And again, not just politically. I mean, there's one guy who's out there in the sun getting sunburned. There are people smoking cigarettes. There are people sitting at tables all together on their iPhones or smartphones, um, not communicating with each other. Um, uh, the, 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 some conspiracy theories are, are made fun of. And there's one line. There's one line that says they buy the crap that sold them from the merchants of division. There's a picture of the tail end of a donkey and the tail end of an elephant and a big emoji duty coming out from there filling the screen. I, mean, I can't remember if the duty is smiling or not. I don't remember either. It's it, 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 duties have funny faces when you see them. You can't tell whether they're happy duties or mad duties, but um, it's a duty nonetheless. Correct. And, and uh, so uh, this is not a partisan piece. And I have not met a single person to date who enjoys duty. <laughs> duty without the face. Yeah, you, you got to admit that that emoji duty is funny. I, I remember, will admit do, that. Do you remember the first time you saw that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you know, I have to credit my son Matthew B. Harrison. He came up with that image. He's he he produced the video. He and I basically wrote it and put it together. 
Um, the music, of course, is provided by Gun Hill Road, which are actually geniuses. These guys are incredibly uh, talented. Incredible. I'm so blessed to be part of this. But but my main concern was I, I don't want people to think this is pro-Democrat or pro-Republican. So we came up with that line. They buy the crap that sold them by the merchants of division. Think about that. They buy the crap that sold them from the merchants of division, and then you see the tail end of a donkey, the tail end of an elephant, an American flag, <laughs> and a big duty. And, and, and let's face it, folks, we do have a, a two-party system has some elements of it that are worth, you know, having. Obviously, there's this benefit to it if it's operated, but politicians are merchants of division. They're not merchants of uni unity. They're merchants of division. And I guess th that's been historically the fact, yes? You've got to be careful of that. Yes, it historically has been the fact, but their, their division these days is particularly duty-esque. Hmm. Otherwise known as full of shaving cream. Right. Full of bleep. <laughs> are, are we done? Do you want to get rid of me now? No! Are you kidding? I want to save you more. I, I enjoy this line of discussion. You know me. Okay. I'm a know. toilet humor person. <laughs> always have been, always you, you, will be. You are I never the, grew up. You are the Duke of Poop. Your career, <laughs> <laughs> your career began by you making sounds on KSEO. In 1967. One of the greatest stories. January 4th. I love that story. Yeah. You know, so. and, and for those who don't know the story, because a lot of people are listening to this nationally um, um, on uh, KSCO.com, you know, we're broadcasting all over the world with this. And I let a, I let a number of people know that I was on today. So uh, when MZ was a kid, but tell the story. Go ahead. It's a great story. Tell, tell the story. I, I was the last kid to ever get picked on every team and it left lifelong scars. You know, but in I was passionate about radio. Wanted to be a a, a a DJ. Wanted to be on the radio, and the radio. There was one radio station in our town, KSCO Santa Cruz. Now this station, but it wasn't formatted as a talk radio station as as it is now. We're talking, you know, from when it was founded in 1947, and 20 years later in 1967, I had for the last year been um, hosting the Santa Cruz High on the Air radio show, the high school radio show that was uh, on, on donated time from the radio station. And it was, it was the, the love of my life. I mean, I, I just lived and breathed and ate and slept for, for KSEO, uh, 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 Santa Cruz High on the Air. Mm. We had done the best program that I thought we had ever done on January 4th, 1967. Um, Wednesday night, 7.30 to 8. At 8 o'clock, Mr. Berlin, the managing partner of KSCO, came storming into the room and said, Zwirling, you're through. <laughs> and I said, what? He says, you don't make a fart noise on KSCO <laughs> and offend our audience. I said, what are you talking about? And I thought and thought, he said, you made a sound. You made a fart sound. <laughs> and it, and it, it, was a, it was a raspberry, a... <laughs> you know, and that was, he said, that offends his audience, and it certainly offended him, and he said, you're finished. I can't. So he took away my radio show, and he was my most hated person in the world for a few years after that, until we became friends when he helped me um, um, uh, put a radio station on the air for the Salinas Union High School District. It's, about a, five, great, six. it's a great irony. Yeah. But I yeah. vowed I would own the radio station that day. I said, oh, really? I'm finished? Okay, well, take this. I quit, and and I remembered using a term that I that my that was popular that, that I heard at home from my father. I said, I quit, and I won't come back even if you kiss my ass in Macy's window. <laughs> oh, I remember that phrase. Yeah, kiss uh, my ass in Macy's window. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, you, uh, <laughs> and 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 furthermore, I'm going to own this place someday. Well, that day came 24 years later, and that was almost 32 years ago. Wow. Wow. 
Wow. So, that's a good story. Anyhow, that's just, I have the audio somewhere. I, I, it's not where it's easily found, but we could play it. The, the actual sound of me, you know, 14 years old or however I was. You, you actually have that moment of broadcasting history? Oh, yeah. You actually I do. have that? I do. Yeah. Wow, that's incredible. I'd love to hear that. You know, I, you know I, I, love, I love the story. Okay, well, th this is sort of another story. Um, uh, Fuller Jeffrey uh, Broadcasting is uh, who I bought KSCO from. Uh, we closed on January 31st, uh, uh, 1991, and the official first day of operation by Zwirling Broadcasting was the next day, February 1st, 1991. And at the celebratory dinner on, on the 31st, Bob Fuller... The, the president of Fuller Jeffrey Broadcasting uh, leaned over to me and said, now, Michael, tomorrow I want you to officially throw me out of your radio station and I'm going <laughs> to drive away. And I said, you're kidding. He said, no, no, I'm dead serious. So then I figured, hmm, he really is serious. So why don't I play the actual thing from 24 years earlier where I got kicked out for making the fart sound right mm -hmm. so i played that to him in the production room and then i said i want to thank you very much for making this lifelong dream come true and now i want to i want you to get the bleep out of my radio station he's, <laughs> i love he's it out of here and and this is all on video too i have a video of that of the guy oh, uh, taking well, I... off getting into his mercedes and speeding away well, I'm sitting here in the talker studio in Massachusetts, and I just plugged into our computer, and I have located an audio recording of your fart sound <laughs> that, you, that, that you made, really? and I'm going to play it for you right now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, it was very much like that. I, I, I'm going to have to pull it. I'm going to have to go find it. But I have it somewhere. You know, that's cool. Just like I have, uh, you know, I, I wrote a promo for Rush Limbaugh describing Santa Cruz, hoping he would do the promo for us. And mm -hmm. I, I, I sent it six months later after I had forgotten about it. He, this this open reel comes back in the in a in the U.S. mail, and there it is, along with some promos. Your savior of sanity and good sense in the sea of Santa Cruz liberalism, <laughs> Rush Limbaugh on KSCO. You know, um, and, and and then the other, you know. Uh, so there's all kinds of stuff, you know. Now, now, you know, in terms of ironies, and 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 again, uh, back to the Gun Hill Road song, I have my own irony that that is is really fascinating in how I became involved with this band. Back in the early '70s, I was a DJ on one of the major underground FM rock stations in America, WNEW FM in New York. And I did the morning show there. I was in my very, 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 very early 20s. And uh, we were able to play whatever we wanted to. And the station basically was, was album rock. And it, but it was a very, very, it was the hippie era. And um, this cool band from New York called Gun Hill Road, it was a trio at that time. Um, and they had a hit record some people may remember called Back When My Hair Was Short. And they had two albums. Uh, they were very big on album rock radio, and I loved the band. I thought that they were one of the greatest bands I'd ever heard, and I used to play them every single day. I, I was a champion of that band, as back in the day, DJs would, would be champions of different artists and play them. Um, uh, you remember from your own experience, I'm sure, you know, back in the Beatles, they were, they were you know, like Murray the K in New York, the fifth sure. Beatle, he called himself, you know, they get behind different groups. I was behind Gun Hill Road. I used to play them all the time. We're talking, you know, 50 years ago. And over the years, Gun Hill Road would get together, then they would break up, and then they'd get together and break up. And um, eight years ago, they got together again, and they put put out an album called Every 40 Years. And I reunited with them, and I, um, I, I introduced them back at a, a very hip, famous music place in New York City called The, uh, the Bitter End. And they, they sold the place out. They've got a big following all over the world, especially in the New York area. And um, their album got a lot of um, attention around the world called Every 40 Years. Then they made another album during the pandemic called What Year Is, is This? And they invited me to be a member of the band. Wow. And I wrote, I wrote a song and I performed the vocals on it called I Know You're Real, which um, it got like over 50,000 views on YouTube. 
and uh, it became an, an international internet hit. Yes. Um, and it was about um, animal welfare. I, I, I like to be kind to animals. Yes. And, um, and then uh, with the fourth album, uh, the fifth album that they're making now, they wanted me to stay with the band, and um, I, I wrote and co-wrote with the band. We're, we're a quartet now, and we, we collaborate on everything. Uh, a couple of songs, including Idiots. So look at, I went from being a DJ 50 years ago that, that this was my favorite band, and I used to play them on the air, to right now being um, lead vocals on their current record. How's that for, a, for a, an ironic thing? You were, It's amazing. And, yeah. and when they asked you to join the band, I bet that was the m m big surprise to you, right? You, you, it, it's not like they were responding to something. Go, gee, gee, I wish I could be in a band or something like that. It, <laughs> there was never anything like that, or was uh, well, there? Well, I, I was, I was basically very surprised um, that they would have me because I'm nowhere near as musically talented as these individuals are. These guys are fantastic musicians, and and they don't do it because they need to they all are successful in other areas i won't get into all of the stuff but they're they're really successful guys and of course they're they're gentlemen of a certain age at this point and they're full of energy and 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 they're brilliant but what they liked about me was that i have this ability to talk sing you know sort of like robert preston and the music man or rex harrison and my fair lady uh, or um uh, a number of great artists who played Lord Tevye. Green in Ringo. Right, right. Or yeah. Barry Sand Sandler, Sadler in uh, the Green Beret. Right. Fighting soldiers from the sky. But see, yeah. you, you, you can sing, and I've oh, been I, encouraging I, I, you for a long time, and you I, won't do it. I, I can sing, but but I'm a talker. But but be that as it may, um, we, um, we were playing with a song that um, was originally called Idioms. And it was about um, the misuse of the English language. And I was playing with it, and I said, wait a second, we're missing the obvious. Let's call this idiots and talk about misuse of intelligence as opposed to the language. And it evolved, <laughs> in, it evolved into idiots. And um, we, we have an amazing horn section that uh, sounds like Chicago. Um, Steve Goldrich, who is the co-founder of the group, is a purist. And he doesn't go for synthesizers. We have real strings, real horns. Uh, it, it's a very, very uh, organic piece of music. A lot of people say, you know, how do you guys sound so good? Uh, they can't believe we sound as good as we do. Um, are, is that karaoke? Karaoke, my ass! This is real music. And, and, and I lent to it the lyrics. I'm a very good writer in terms of lyrics that have something to do with current events. Yes, and, you do. Uh, I mean, yes, you are. And I, and I, and I speak well. So... Uh, that's how I became a part of the group. It's one of the most enjoyable things. One of the things I really like about it, uh, and this really has nothing to do with, with, with the quality of the music or, or the, the success that we're having in terms of the people that do follow it, is that I really enjoy being part of this club. Uh, I mean, there's, these are three great guys, and they're not in the radio business. They're not part of what I do every day. It, it's like, it's like, a, uh, like a bowling league. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a card game. I have these three guys, and, and, and when we get together, and we're together all the time because we have Zoom and we have, you know, um, the digital technology, uh, there's a tremendous camaraderie, respect, and encouragement. I really enjoy the whole thing. What blew me, one of the things that blew me away about you, Michael, um, was learning that you use GarageBand, mm -hmm. which is a software to create music. Yes, and I had no idea you you had that um, penchant. I guess you know? I've always I've always been um, a fan of music, a um, purveyor well, of music. That I knew for sure because of your and, background and, and, and in music in some radio. Ways, and in some ways, a musicologist, a, ha a half-ass musicologist. But when I got GarageBand seven eight years ago, it unleashed in me the opportunity to write songs. I've written over eighty songs, and um, Holy I, Christmas. I've, I've done it on my on my smartphone. And um, I wrote, um, I, I, I've written a number of songs. Uh, on, All on I've it. ever written is a, a 60 second promo for the Saturday special. I've yeah, written a bunch of those. Make a song. But you are a, you are a fantastic singer. And, and, and I know that a lot of people make fun of you when you sing on the air because you do the, the karaoke thing. And, uh, and they say, you know, don't quit your day job. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. But but you you have a smoky, husky, 
Louis Armstrong uh, type of a voice. And uh, I, I think one of the, the great things about your multifaceted broadcast career, and I, I think you are one of the great broadcasters in America, is that you are not afraid to go on the air and sing. Shamelessly. Shameless, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, Amy is probably rolling her eyes going, oh, boy. Uh, um, but, uh, you know, I, I, I love when you do the karaoke. And um, one of the things I've suggested to you, you know, we're, we're this little behind-the-scenes stuff, is that you get yourself an ensemble of good musicians from the Santa Cruz area and, and graduate from karaoke to actually having MZ and uh, the Blah Blahs. And <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. That should but be the name MZ of the MZ and the Blah Blahs. Yes, yeah. MZ and the name. Blah Blahs. And, and, I mean, you got a I radio like station. That. you got the, you got a, you got a, a, a nice facility the there. I like that. But um, I do want to... I, 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 I know we don't have enough time now to, to play the song again. I won't be a, as they say in uh, Brooklyn, I will not be a chaza and uh, take advantage of this, but I, I, I do encourage everybody listening to this. It, it means a lot Should to me personally. Play to, again. To, I don't know if you have the time. Again. Yeah, because uh, can you? I don't remember all the uh, words. No, we, not, we can play three of the four minutes. Should we do that? Yeah, and then I'll tell everybody where to go, and then I'll say goodbye. Yeah. Uh, okay, here we go. Here. On a holiday for many folks every day. Spewing words of fear and hate makes our culture second rate. Let's start out with easy stuff, then the stuff that's far more tough. Here at home and overseas, ignorance is the real disease. Idiots walk among us. They're lazy, lazy, lazy. Idiots talk among us. Their speech is often hazy. Idiots talk among us. Never ceases to amaze me. Idiots talk among us. Tries me crazy, crazy, crazy. Crazy, 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 crazy. They cherry pick and reaffirm half-baked dumb ideas. Agree with almost anything that feeds their hate and fears. Blaming others for their own damn lack of vision. They buy the crap that sold them from the merchants of division. Idiots walk among us. They're lazy, lazy, lazy. Idiots talk among us. Their speech is often hazy. Idiots talk among us. Never ceases to amaze me. Idiots talk among us. Tries me crazy, crazy, crazy. Right, blue or red. It pays to have an open mind, but not an empty head. Life is full of mysteries. Don't mean to sound aloof. But knuckleheads seek victory at the expense of truth. Okay, uh, yes. We, so, we're, there's so, about 30 seconds left. Okay, so go, folks, to ksco.com. K, during the news, watch the uh, video and then come back to the station. ksco.com or idiotsvideo.com. But yeah. I prefer you go to ksco.com at this point. Great. And, uh, Thank you, Michael. Um, Thank you. Uh, Krishna and Duffy will be, calls will be taken. They've been waiting all, all hour here, but we haven't opened the phone lines. We will. And next hour, very, very important. Come, today is, will be cloudy, then becoming mostly sunny, high near 68. Tonight, chance of drizzle, increasing clouds, low of 56. Tomorrow, cloudy, then becoming mostly sunny, high near 67. Sunday night, low of 55. And Monday, mostly sunny, high near 71. And taking a look at the seas right now, today there's southwest winds, 5 to 10 knots, becoming westerly, 10 to 15 knots with gusts up to 20 knots this afternoon. Wind waves 3 to 4 feet. 
Tonight, west winds 15 to 20 knots, wind waves 3 to 4 feet. KSEO News Talk Time is now 11.06, and we bring you back to the Saturday Special with your host, MZ. MZ. We'll start it again here, okay? I, I was on cue here. Two callers last hour who were on the on hold for the whole hour, Krishna and Duffy. We're gonna hear from them right now. I'm sorry, baby, but I really gotta go to KSEO Radio. Bye. Krishna. Hi, Krishna. Hi. Don't worry about us. Duffy and I are busy. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, should I have you on individually or together? I love togetherness, but only in this case. Uh, you, together, yes? Yes. Okay, I better lock you in. And now I'm going to bring in Duffy. Hi, Duffy. Swirling! Oh, job. <laughs> I, I think that, I think that destroyed the transmitter. Are we still on the air, uh, David? Yeah, yeah sorry. I'm not quite sure. I, no, I, I got you on speaker, man. I, you know what? So not a good idea. Uh, what I have to say is, right in the wheelhouse. First of all, can I give a reflection back on the uh, wonderful song or talk thing that uh, Mr. Harrison did? Okay, is that okay, uh, Krishna? Well, continue, but I thought we had enough of it. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, the subject matter is wearing thin. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Well, wh whatever you want to say, Duffy, but I think you know Krishna's feelings on it now. Feelings. Oh, I, 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 I couldn't understand her. What did she say? She says it's enough is enough. But go ahead, because you waited on hold for a long time, I assume. An hour. So I just here's what I want to say, all right? You can steal my election, and you can steal all my tools, but you'll never steal my patriotic support for Trump, all right? That's number one. Very number two, okay. say whatever you will. I just, I, I'm thanking God that, you know, I got on the radio. So what I've been doing, all right, if you were wondering, hey, what's Duffy been up to? Yes, right? I have been wondering. Was going to call okay. you, actually. I know. I called you earlier, but I, I remembered that you were probably doing your usual routine before. <laughs> the thing. here's what I wanted to say. I've been coming up with all these Irish Trump songs, which is right in the wheelhouse of this musical you know, thing going on on this talk radio. I'd like to hear, you know, let you guys hear what some of this stuff sounds like, if I may. Oh, golly. You know, let, let, can you do it like in less, in a, less than a minute and we'll, we'll plan it ahead. We'll, we'll do a whole segment or a whole show on it in the, in the near future because we have well, other, let, other things planned for this hour, well, but you guys oh, yeah, were waiting. No, I, I know. So let me lay this one on you, all right? Yeah. So the other thing I've been doing is spreading the icing on the cake with Trump Irish limericks, okay? Okay. So here's what that sounds like. There once was a man named Trump. He'll be causing the Democrats' heads to bump. You'll be hearing a lot of barking and yelling. It'll be because it's their own poop they'll be smelling. They'll be doing a lot of harassing and treason. Then they're giving us no good reason. He'll be spreading 
truth with our young and, and youth. And he'll be spreading prosperity, hope, and truth. He'll be helping the media look sad because Donald J. Trump's the greatest president we've ever had. So that's what the stuff I've been working on. Thank, Thank you, you for, for sharing, Duffy. That's great. And we have to do more of it for sure. But I want to let Krishna have her say because she's waited a long no, time, too. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you, Krishna. I mean, thank you, Duffy. Here's Krishna. Go ahead, Krishna. Well, I agree with every word that Duffy just said. Now, what I wanted to say is the gentleman that you had on for the hour. Yes, Michael Harrison. Michael Harrison. I love his shows in the evening. But in the daytime, he somehow loses his... his polish and spit. So what, what, what I wanted to say is that the tenet of his arguments I disagree with. I think the two words that are the most wonderful words that created America, that continues to give it its vibrancy, is words of freedom where every man says, I disagree. I love that. I don't want agreement. I don't want to uh, let's get along to go along. This is a bad part of American culture. I don't like it. I never liked it. This is how come they, they breed dogs that want to weigh, children that are uh, disobedient and and schools that are gone soft, all of this comes from getting along. I want disagreement. I want a revolution. I think we are coming to the point where a revolution would be very healthy for this country. Even though the man that I love most, Ben Franklin, said, here's your republic if you can keep it. I'm afraid we are very close to not keeping it. And I don't think it's a bad idea at all. For the South, it's, it's us. And for the North, it's the cold-blooded liberals. And that's all I have to say, darling. Thank you for the show. You're Please welcome, Krishna. Up. What did you think of what Krishna said, Amy? Well... I think a revolution is necessary if happen gonna happen, but I not really like to have a bloody, violent revolution. I don't think it's good for anybody. I don't like uh, you know is, um, is liberals, the, but I think uh, they are necessary. We have with different parties and uh, different voices. Otherwise, one voice, you know what it is. I think Krishna is still here. Are you Krishna? Yes, I'm listening. I'm okay. here. So would you would you agree with, uh, do, do you, I know you don't care for liberals, but do you wish they would all go away? No. I think if it, they weren't around, I wouldn't be having so much fun. Okay. Yeah, that's great, yeah. It's a necessary it, it, evil. It, it, it's a little Necessa liberals are a necessary <laughs> evil? Is that what you just said, Amy? That, that's what I think, yeah. Absolutely. Because L I liberals are them. a necessary evil. Yes. Wow. Okay, no wonder they call this a conservative radio station when I've always said it's a station for everybody who chooses to use it. Please, I love everybody, but I want mostly to disagree with them. That's what I love. Interesting. Okay, well, you guys are on the same page for that, huh? Yes. Yeah. Well, very good. Uh, okay. So and thank you for that, and thank you for that. Thank you for keeping the station alive somehow. Uh, yeah, the... well, that's that's going to be the subject of the next uh, rest of the program, and I think. And don't tease us. Just do it. Don't what? Either way. Either way, just do it. And I believe that you have every right just, to die. Just, just do what? With... Ju either way, just do what? Close what it you... down. Close it down. Close down, KSEO? If you, if you don't have... If you don't have that spirit bubbling inside of you that you used to, because you're getting old and it's becoming too blah for you, well, close it down. I, I but think, I'll miss you terribly. Uh huh. Well, I w maybe someone else could 
pick up the thing from here and, and move it forward. I think Dave Dave would be great. Dave Michaels. Oh, the, the, yeah. The show of James Du or whatever his name is and Dave are together, the show is vibrant and wonderful. I love it. I, I see. I think he's, he's a lawyer, isn't he? Yes. Yes. When he and Dave are together, they, I think they have a show together sometimes. I don't know which day of, in the evening. I just Tuesdays, love it. Tuesdays, I think. Tuesday, flight 1080, uh, 4 to 6, uh, they, 4 they to uh, 7. Essence, they are the essence of, of a KSEO, what you always were. But now you must have some time for yourself. Have a great time, but hand it over to the to the young and the people who haven't yet experienced life like you have. Wow. Good idea. You got it? Wow. Excellent. Wow. Yes. It's so, time. It's time. Otherwise, you'll miss that good part of the time that God gave us that's right. to, to, to enjoy life a little bit. Yeah. And not always have to deal with, I've got to do this and I've got to do that. Right. So do that because that's God's gift to you before you take your last breath. Right. Okay. Yes. Well, uh, right. so thank you very much. Forget all this fighting, this stupid fighting with st bureaucrats of all things. They're the worst species in the world. Bureaucrats. <laughs> They're not even politicians. They're bureaucrats. Oh, disgusting word. Oh. All right, darling. Okay. I listen. All right. Thank you. Uh, here's Bye -bye. Ray. Thank you, Krishna. Uh, here's Ray in Watsonville. Uh, 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 Ray, you're on the air. Good morning. How are you? Uh, okay, Ray. How are you? Boy, you have a very resonating audience today. Uh, to almost... <laughs> well, Krishna is no stranger to speaking her mind <laughs> for many years but on this station. Only talking about Duffy. Oh, Duffy? Yeah, he was no, no, was no, very no, resonating. Meeting audience, meaning, meaning everybody's brought up some very, very, very powerful statements. Right. And I and I wanted to jump in on this. Okay. You know, as far as as far as um going in needing a, re, a, a a a revolution, you know the corruption in this country right now is is so so thick and it is so so entrenched that the person that made that statement may, might unfortunately be right. It is very sad to see how deep we, this country is entrenched in corruption. And it's, it may not be 100% reversible. So with that being said, and listening to all the different sound bites that I've heard, I'm going to make this statement. MZ, I think this mission for this station is doing, doing a phenomenal and most important job that it ever could have ever done in its in its future and past what your people are focused on right now is more important than anything else and that is partaking in the getting this country back on track i don't think that uh, many times i don't think that you realize how big of an impact that your station has in that mission and how powerful your station and the audience and the demographics that attract the station attracts is really is really having an effect, not just here, not just between us, but across the country. And I don't think you I don't think you have the opportunity to see that because you're inside no looking out. Um, and I wanted to, Ray, I thank wanted thank you for saying that. Um, and uh, what, what what can I say? I just thank you for saying that. Um, I uh, I like to think that what w that our mission is important. We're just a, a local radio station. Uh, we're we're not we're here to serve our local communities. I we're not here to ser serve our our country. Although I like to think that serving our local communities is serving our our whole country. But I don't know. What, what can we say? You're allowing patriotism to 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 flourish here, and I think that's what I think that's what's important. And 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 if it wasn't for the format of your station, then many many millions of people would not see 
that are true patriots and people that are calling in on the station and sharing their voice. Wait a minute. What and did you say? Many, many millions? You're, uh, you have a very, very wide audience. Well, I, I mean, mean, millions? Come on. I mean, that'd be great. Probably, I, I hope you're right, but I don't you, you think never you are. It, but, uh, you know, lots of people we didn't know, but they say they listen. You didn't know. They don't you call in. People, you, you don't know about it. Put it this way, MZ. When you have people calling in from Australia, you're not just you're not just viewing to your backyard. Okay, there are a lot of people that just simply don't call. They don't have the ner- the guts or nerve or the or the or the the personality to get on the radio like I would or like somebody else. It's like going on stage. The stage fright. People don't call. They listen. More people listen to talk radio to listen, not to engage. If they want to engage, they'll go do a talk show. But my point is, you have a very, very, very patriotic audience, and 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 and, and you're allowing oh, them. To, that that is for sure. Yeah. And you're allowing. I think them, a category right should be patriot, not someone left the right or what. I don't like to be labor people like that. Patriot, but you don't that's mind true. labeling them patriots. Oh yeah, that's not labor. That's what imagine, it is. Imagine, huh? imagine if we erased what little of patriotism that we do here in society. Just imagine if that goes away. What what personalities really would be like? How we would think. And that's all I really have to say. Your station is allowing patriotic people to voice their patriotism and let it show. And that's powerful. It's very, very influential. And that's what needs to happen now, more so than ever. Just because if we don't, people are going to start losing faith. They're going to start losing hope. They're going to start losing to the, to, to the, to the same bureaucrats that are destroying our country. And so my point here is I want to thank you, and I don't think you should change a damn thing with your format. I think, I think right now we need to see this through at all costs. We need to get this country back on track because if we don't, this is the curtain call. Right. And, and it's just unfortunate that, that I'm you know, 58 years old, just turned 58, making that statement. It's, 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 it's almost the worst part of the Bible, you know. Right. Um, coming true, and 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 with that being said, it's 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 absolutely imperative that that we come together now and and continue the fight. Let's see what we can do to achieve that. Thank well, you, Ray and Watsonville. Yeah, Appreciate sure. your kind words. That was Ray and Watsonville. Um, okay, eleven twenty-four and a half. Um, all right, um, we did a program last week on stress, and a number of people called in during that program wanting to know an update on the uh, KSEO um, uh, patio situation uh, with the permits with the government, and they're forcing us to uh, do what I think is absolutely idiotic and stupid and insane, and I won't do it, okay? Um they want, they want us to jackhammer out a whole bunch of, you know, um, thousands of feet of, of square feet of, uh, of concrete uh, um, uh, buffer for fire to protect the building, um, to protect the lagoon from um, uh, oil and junk going into it, which isn't good for the environment. They want us to, to uh, jackhammer it out and saw cut and create a whole bunch of of, of concrete dust and so forth. And they think that that is a smart thing to do to punish me and KSCO for daring. And we, it wasn't a dare because I honestly didn't think it was necessary. And I'm talking about getting a permit to put in our patio and our protective walkway around the radio station. Um, we did that in 2015. And... Um, so um, we have been ordered uh, to um, jackhammer and destroy a, a wonderful community and KSEO asset. And I don't think that's reasonable. And it's I've, also polluting the environment. You can ask those birds, milling birds here. I don't think they like a concrete dust. They like, don't like to... Yes. Know, in. Okay, but, but I'm, not, I'm not right either. I'm not, I was wrong 
to sign a stipulation a, which was essentially a blank check that was to mistake. the county of it was a big mistake and yeah. i'm not blaming anybody but myself for that so i made one mistake i don't want to make another mistake okay i think there's a way for the county to be reasonable with us and that is for the board of supervisors three of the five of them and i think five of them should be smart enough to vote to give a waiver for the radio station that that keeps this place that keeps the communities connected during earthquakes floods power outages and any kind of local disasters okay doesn't matter what your politics are i believe there are lots of people the cancel culture that's that's getting stronger and stronger in the united states of america these days i think there's a lot of local cancel culture i think it might have even begun here <laughs> the cancel culture in america might have had its genesis here in, in santa cruz mm -hmm. i think there are a lot of people who would rather ksco would go away okay and this is a good way to make that happen good way to make it happen um anyhow people wanted to find they wanted an update last week during our stress thing and you said i should have addressed that and because that's what people yeah, want to hear. A couple of callers. They a couple just of callers know last what, week. Yeah, what's the update? What's the situation? What is the, um, those uh, planning department? What right. do they say? What's and the planning response? department has taken its, has, has made its, its position known. And, and um, they're not, they're just doing their job. They're not bad people. You know, they're people who are doing what they were hired to do. Okay. Um, but in any case, uh, um, what they have um, ordered me to do uh, under, under the terms of a stipulation, which is a legal agreement that I did foolishly sign, um, is not what I consider um, in the community's interest, in the radio station's interest, and in anybody's interest. It's just plain punishment yeah but that and, you signed bad, that for the, and bad for the environment you signed that that because they only asking you they require you to have the survey right so you did that so you think it's, uh, it's finished yes the case closed yes but that survey come out they say you okay you yes. totally fit but the but they, they, but the planning department didn't like the, that survey yeah but they did not really uh, so they said we're not accepting what this survey says this is what you have to do. Yeah, but I think uh, you talked to the people, uh, the person write the survey, and uh, I think uh, he said that you can uh, talk about that because he exactly do what they request. Yes. And uh, they just don't like the result. Okay, so here's the latest on this. I sent a um, email yesterday uh, to um, um, my... Um, local supervisor for this district and that is uh manu koenig i'm trying to find it here uh and i'll, I'll read it here uh yeah any update this is what i sent to supervise it was late in the afternoon so i didn't expect a response yesterday and maybe certainly monday. didn't get any now maybe maybe will uh maybe on monday any update rep regarding riparian exception for ksco radio station concrete patio in riparian area Hi, Manu. I assume you and the other supervisors have seen the attached comprehensive letter from one concerned listener, Becky Steinbrenner, that excellently presents the arguments to grant the exception or come up with another solution. Are there any new developments following the meeting spoken of by Jamie Seahorn? Apparently, Jamie Seahorn is an is a, um, analyst who works for the Board of Supervisors and for uh, Supervisor Koenig in particular. Um, anyhow, um, I received a, a long email from um, uh, Becky, and uh, it was actually forwarded to me. I didn't receive it directly from Becky. Maybe somehow it, it missed me, but I got it from our staff. And it, it, it builds an amazing case for the supervisors um, going ahead and feeling comfortable. You know, when I spoke to Manu here at the radio station three Saturdays ago, 
and showed him. I said, Manu, does this make any sense at all? And he agreed with me. He said, this, this is crazy. It doesn't make any sense. And I'm going to deal with this. And he went and talked to the planning people. And uh, the next time I talked to him, it sounds like the planning people almost totally turned around his way of thinking. Like, it's so complicated because it's so close to the lagoon and there you have to make so many findings for the board of supervisors to be able to vote to give a waiver to something like this. Um, okay, well, this is great. I've been vamping a little bit here to, to set the stage for uh, Becky Steinbrenner herself, who is now uh, here. I'm going to lock her in. She's going to be with us for the rest of the program. Becky, welcome to KSCO. We love you. And the people need to know right now that if KSCO survives, it will be because of Becky Steinbrenner. Oh, no. <laughs> MZ, thank you. It's an honor to be um, on your, your program. And thank you for all your good work and to also to Amy. Um, it will not be because of me. It will because, be because of the community that supports KSCO. And as one of your callers from Watsonville said, the, the critical thinking, the, the viewpoints, everything that you bring to the community, and it is a very large listening audience. I, when I travel, I listen to KSCO all the way through the Bay Area um, until I'm almost to Napa. So you have a very large area, and I just want to thank you for all that you are doing and your programmers and the excellent information that you put out everyday programs but also as you said the emergency communication so thank you um well, how, uh, how do you see the the situation now because um apparently there was going to be a meeting yet another meeting by uh, with um, Supervisor Ma Manu Koenig's staff and the uh, planning department later l last week. And I, that's what I was asking Manu about. I said, whatever happened there? I mean, is there anything new? So, Well, uh, that's the information I have as well. I sent, um, I researched something in the county code called a riparian exception there are always ways to get around things if you can make the necessary findings and the email that i sent to all of the board of supervisors and copied all three of supervisor koenig's analysts outlined those five different findings that must be made and i proceeded to make and support legally. I'm not an attorney. Let me make that clear. But but I've learned a lot in seven years of, of researching county documents and procedures to know that th those findings, in my opinion, can be made. And so Supervisor Koenig has the justification to support KSCO getting a riparian exception. Um, when I, I did uh, send that to the board, all of the board members and Supervisor Koenig's analysts, Monday night before last Tuesday's County Board of Supervisor meeting, it was not anything that was on the agenda. Um, so it, the only opportunity that people had to speak about it was in the very beginning during um, public comment. There were difficulties with some people, the clerk announced, uh, being unable to join via um, the online computer source. So people who did speak came in via telephone. The clerk of the board did not announce how one, quote, raises your hand, end quote, to be recognized. So some people may have been confused by that as well. But I did go in person to that meeting, and one of your other listeners did as well. And uh, you can... You can look at that, and, and um, if you go to the county, Santa Cruz County Board of Supervisors website and then click on the um, meeting agendas for last Tuesday, there's a video link there, and you can uh, watch and listen to what was said. The supervisors did not respond, 
and typically they do not. But I did receive um, a, a message from Ms. Jamie Seahorn, one of the analysts for Supervisor Koenig, who told me, as you were also informed, that there was going to be another meeting um, late this past week with the code compliance people in the planning department. Let me be clear, this is complaint driven. That's what's at issue here. And they That's, won't tell you who complained either. No, no. You they demand won't. to know because in the United States, as far as I know, you have the right to confront your accuser. In a court not, of law. Not, <laughs> not in the city, not in the county planning department in Santa Cruz. They will not tell you who filed the, per, the uh, complaint. No. Okay. It, 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 it shouldn't matter, really, except that it bothers me. Uh, yeah. It doesn't. It, it's it's a problem. We're trying to deal with it. And by the way, um, I think it's pretty it's pretty clear by the the uh, stipulation that I stupidly, stupidly, stupidly signed that uh, that that the meetings, any anything that the county planning people, any time that they spend for the rest of my and their lives even talking about this topic I have to pay for out of my own pocket at whatever uh, hourly rate for however many people they decide to put on this uh, they feel like charging that that's why wrong. I'm the stupidest person that ever lived and I deserve to lose no, the radio empty. station and the property because I'm so stupid no, to have MC. signed such a stupid, stupid, stupid stipulation. MC, but I, I did it, <laughs> and I deserve everything that's going to happen to me and no, us. No, listen, listen, you are not stupid. You are stressed out probably beyond belief because I have witnessed what happens when code compliance comes after you. It's county council that draws up all of these very official uh, threatening papers and I have witnessed a property owner sign them because she was so stressed out she didn't she couldn't even read them yeah what I so was told right before I was stupid. right before I signed it is but this is by some god what was his name Gary something or other he was a hearing officer uh -huh. and he said if you do not sign this that's in front of you right now Mr. Uh -huh. Zwirling you are not going to like what I do to you that's immediately. I swear to God, that's what he said to me. Wow. I think that's his name is Redenbacher. Oh. Nice man. I called him afterwards, and I said, you know, um, I, I don't know. I, I, he answered his own phone in Scotts Valley, and uh, I had a nice conversation with him, but I, I, the, the more I realized... The more time went by, the more I realized that I get exactly what I deserve. He's not with the county, MZ. He's a private attorney. I know. So he's he's I know. representing someone. But he's the one who said to me, if you do not sign this stipulation, and it was on a Zoom meeting, wow. you are not going to like what I do to you immediately. He representing counting that time? Yeah. Oh. That's that's a threat. Yeah, and that's totally yeah. true. I, I would like to see a copy of that order and stipulation, MZ. I'll put it on the website. Please. Yeah. yeah. Put Please. it on the website. Uh, but unless it, but you I, still, I still I still I still would not. <laughs> huh? Unless you sign something saying that you would not. Read it carefully no. because okay, very good. No. Yeah. So you know, MZ, what people have to do is we have to come in mass and support you. And uh, people need to flood the telephone and emails of our county supervisors. Some of them, quite frankly, will not pay attention, but some of them will. Uh, supervisor Koenig, your uh, supervisor most certainly should. That's his job. You know, these people have forgotten. They are in office, elected by the people to serve the people not to promote uh, government policy when it is adversely affecting the people. And more and more I'm seeing that, and it bothers me so Supervisor much. Supervisor Bruce McPherson, uh, whose family founded this station. The McPherson family, uh, uh, Bruce's uh, father, uh, Fred McPherson, the publisher of the Santa Cruz Sentinel, 
and his brother, Dr. Malin McPherson, uh, were two-thirds uh, partners in Radio Santa Cruz, the company that, that uh, founded and built and, and ran the radio station for 39 years. Wow. So I would think that, um, that uh, br this would be very important to Bruce. Uh, has, has he responded? Or no. Have you well, contacted he, he's, him? I contacted him um, during, this has been going on since 2019, by the way. Wow. And I contacted him during the pandemic, and, and he was pretty stressed himself, the poor guy. I think he had just been um, ordered to evacuate his home during one of the fires, you know. Oh. And he said, besides, you know, um, you need to talk to, the, uh, to your current supervisor. And uh, at the time, which which was a guy named John Leopold, I called him and uh, I didn't get much with him. He said, oh, you've done that. Oh, I don't know. I don't think I don't know. This is pretty serious. So I, I figured that wasn't going to do any good. Then Manu got elected and he seems like a reasonable guy and he seemed reasonable and yeah. he he's, hasn't given me a reason to think that he's unreasonable now except i think he's let this county scare the hell out of him i think he has and maybe the other supervisors have also i don't know all i know is that at this point the future of ksco is up in the air okay and i don't like being in that position no well i think a reasonable question to ask of um, Supervisor Koenig, ask him because he's not going to, he, he cannot charge you an hourly rate for his time, but ask him what is, what is the process for appealing the stipulation and order that I signed under threat, make sure you make that clear, mm -hmm. and what are the alternatives okay in, in all in all fairness to the county uh, planning people and the county council they have given me an opportunity to sign a new stipulation okay and they have asked me several weeks ago now to come up with a timeline that that I can live with to get certain things done including the demolition of the um, of, of the uh, the portion of the uh, patio uh, and submit it to them and to see if they're if they'll work with me if they'll negotiate with me with me in, in that way and I haven't done it yet because um, I I already don't like the fact that I'm being required to do something that anybody with any brains in his head or her head would realize is idiotic Not yeah. You know, uh, uh, I have a question, Becky, because you said that you were research lots of documents. I'm just wondering, because normally sp stipulation form is like a, during the legal action. Yes. Yeah, and, but there's no legal, not a real, it should be signed by the judge or recorded in the open court. Exactly. But it's not a, anything go to the court, not the case. You know, it's not legal action. How is any it, to be valid? Th doesn't to matter. To be effective? I, no, to be effective. Doesn't matter what you said. To be effective, sure, signed yeah. by the judge. Exactly. That's the stipulation and, and the recorded on the court. Signed by judge yeah. doesn't mean anything. You had to record it on open court. But so uh, I don't think it even valid. I I don't know. So do you know anything? Any case? Um. Uh, they can punish you without the due processing, without the legal procedure, just just by you sign the forms. Well, I've waived my rights. Well, no, Amy matter. brings up a very good point. Is this a a legal filed document that has legal weight? The case that I helped a person with in a similar similar thing, mm -hmm. county council took her to court in Santa Cruz County Superior Court, and she was, uh, she was not threatened, but she was given 10 days to review the proposed stipulation and order. It, they were all legally done in a court of law. Mm -hmm. I'm hearing now for the first time, this was not. No. And that, that's a little shocking. And MZ, I think you've got something here to really follow up on, and I would encourage if there are legal um, attorneys, 
uh, paralegals in your audience, that they step forward mm -hmm. and help you with this because this does not sound right. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> All right. I'd like to see a copy of it. And, oh, yeah, and I'll, I'll send it to you, and, and I'll send it to Jaunty to be published on the uh, yes. on the website. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think that people really have to start pressuring the the county supervisor, Manu Koenig. You you have an ally with Supervisor Greg Caput in uh, District Four. I know that he is uh, supportive of, of KSCO, and I would also follow up with Supervisor McPherson. Because even though um, his family is now not involved in it, it, KSCO served so well the CZU fire people. I was a volunteer at the uh, county fairgrounds the first night and second night that the CZU evacuation happened. And I was there the, those whole two days. People relied on KSCO for information for the, the Cal Fire morning and afternoon updates because you were airing them live. There were no such activities at the fairground. Nobody was connecting with them, but KSCO did. And I can't tell you how much people appreciated that information and relied upon KSCO. So Supervisor McPherson certainly should. Supervisor Coonerty has kind of, in my opinion, checked out of everything because he's not... He's a lame duck, I guess, right? Because he's, he he's going to be out in uh, November or January, I think, right? January, right? yes. Yeah. But he certainly should be there to bat for KSCO because... I think he would, but I just don't know. You never... I, I thought Bruce McPherson would be our, our number one uh, advocate. Um, and I'm... I'm well, check uh, maybe, again maybe he Maybe he still will be. I don't know, but... And, I'm, and I'm not encouraged at the moment from anybody at the moment. <laughs> well, you know what? Um, let's get together because I know who his analysts are, and sometimes it's really the analysts, their aides, that are doing the work. The supervisors themselves, mm -hmm. sometimes I'm convinced, don't even read the emails. They are all filtered through their analysts. And so um, Ginny Johnson and J.M. Brown, a former Sentinel <laughs> reporter, are the analysts for uh, Bruce McPherson. So make sure that they know. Ask, call them up and ask for an appointment to talk with them. The, the supervisor or, or the analyst, not the supervisor? I would ask all of them. Because in my experience, when I tried to get a meeting with um, Supervisor Leopold, he didn't have time, and he punted it off to his analyst, who was very reasonable. Are they going to charge you for that? Probably. <laughs> if it, well, really? If it, if it involves the plan, if, also, it, if it involves the planning department, and and I'm sure that's what they were going to do this last week. Whether or not it happened, I don't know, right, uh, Becky? But this is illegal because they paid. They if they are employee or contract for the counting, and they paid. By the taxpayer's money. Yes. And why had to charge you again? I don't understand. You had to pay if your cop gave you a ticket. The time he issued a ticket to you, you had to pay for it? Well, that's how the it The timing, works. I'm talking about their labor or whatever, their time. You had to pay for it? I don't understand that. It's the first that, time I heard about that. That's what I have seen, though, Amy, <clears throat> in code compliance violations when it is shown that there is a violation. And let me And let especially me if that. some if someone has signed a stipulation. I mean they've, but they've no, the basically va they basically signed their no, life. No, I'm away. talking about doesn't matter in this country if yeah. we still have a constitution. Yes. You presume innocent. Doesn't matter what they charge you. You had to prove they had to prove why why you wrong or violations. Not just say say so. Right. So? Right. Like and a traffic ticket I got, I can fight in the court. Right. Right? And, and I'm very curious why Mr. Gary Redenbacher, a private attorney, would be the one that would be um, following trading, up yeah. on all of this. No, no, he didn't. Fo no, I, fo I followed up with him. No, 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 he was out of the picture. I'm just, I'm just stating what happened on the Zoom meeting. I, I yeah, but exactly. that Zoom, on that Zoom meeting, uh, he's representing counting, right? 
I not representing so. you, definitely. Definitely yeah. not representing me. No, he was he was the hear, hearing officer representing the county. Yeah. And I swear to God, he said to me, "If you do not sign this new stipulation, you I are not that. going you to life." Yeah, that you day. were there. I you was were there. there. Yeah, I remember that. I said, yeah. "Wow." Who is so you saw that he's the counting officer or whatever? I don't know. You I, didn't I, know he's private counsel, no? No. I don't think you know because you didn't tell me that's a lawyer. You just say that somebody from the counting and tell you they told you that. Anyhow, MZ should. I've, I'm I'm old enough now and reasonably intelligent enough to have not <laughs> fallen into that trap, but I did. Well, it's not because you're stupid. So please don't ever say that. Stressed is a good word. Stressed, yes. stressed a better is a good word. word. And stressed yes. must be must be viewed as a disease causing entity. Stress, stress makes people die. Stress right, right, the, Amy. You, you are like in the that stress. nice lady we had on, the the yeah. the um, 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 podiatrist, you know, Doctor um, uh, Doctor Blasco that we had on the Saturday special. Everything you want to know about your feet, you know, yeah. about a year ago or something like that. This is someone that you know. You, you, she's your your podiatrist yes. and became mine. Yeah. And you knew about the personal stress that she was going through, and she said, "You no, got it." You signed that. You in the stress, also under the threatening. Yeah. Just found out somebody tell you they gonna th they threatening you. Yeah. So under that pressure, and you signed. Yeah. You don't even know what you signed. Right. But the, to be effective, it had to be the court order. I think, don't I, think that they has no processing in this whole thing that I don't understand. No and due you process. You should always have time to carefully review a document before you sign it, that you were pressured into um, signing it you right You know what? I, 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 Jesus, I don't want to put, I don't want to be guilty of putting out wrong information. Uh, and I did earlier in this, if you don't sign this right now, or you're not going to like what I do. The right now was not present. I did have a, a day or two to think about it because I, I don't want to lie or put out incorrect information. The information that I was told that if I don't sign this stipulation, I am not going to like what he will do to me. That's a threat. Okay? <laughs> That's a threat. But I, I, don't, I didn't threat. sign it right then, you know. Yeah. I, I, I had a day or two to... No. There to think about in the that kind of threat to your side. Yeah. To lose street sleep and be oh, sleep deprived. There, there, I, don't, and I, don't, <laughs> I don't. I don't. know. I don't know how to sleep any very I much know, anymore. That's, that's uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I mean, I say that from the heart. I wish I could sleep. I'm not sleeping very much these days. Mm -hmm. Well, let me go over the findings that Supervisor Koenig felt were very, very complicated. They're not. In order to get a riparian exception, and this is in county code, you can look it up. Um, I don't, uh, and if you, MC, if you want to put up my email um, on the website as well so people have access to the county codes, you have my permission to do that. Thank you. The first finding is that there are special circumstances or conditions affecting the property. Um, KSCO has been around since 1947. Uh, your professional licensed contractor told you you did not have to have a permit, which that brings up a thought I have. Does that contractor have an attorney that may be able to help you out with an errors and omissions clause in um, that contractor's um, insurance policy? The second finding is that the exception is necessary for the proper design and function of some permitted or existing activity on the property. And I say yes, because the whole concern about sea level rise, um, you need to protect your building. It's a 1947 structure um, that you need to protect in able to enable your station, the station, to continue providing good public service. Um, the third finding is that the granting of the exception will not be detrimental to the public welfare or injurious to other property downstream or in the area in which the project is located. And that finding is easy to make because, as you said earlier in your program, it, is, it prevents erosion, it, uh, it 
it is a peaceful place. You you have the the right to peaceful enjoyment of your property, and it is not in any way harming the downstream property owners. As, as long as the drainage, the surface drainage from this new impermeable surface is taken care of. The fourth finding is that um, the granting of the exception in the coastal zone will not reduce or adversely impact the riparian corridor, and there is no feasible, less environmentally damaging alternative. That's a big one, because what the county is now saying that you have to do is very damaging. Think about the noise of a jackhammer with all of those lovely birds. Some of them may be, um, you know, disturbed and and harmed by the sound of a jackhammer, the concrete dust, the the think about the and I'm going to just use their own terms, the greenhouse gas emissions that will be required to truck all this stuff away when the county is trying to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Um, this is the seasoned concrete thing. It's a patio. It's not emitting anything, and to leave it in place is the most feasible alternative. Um, and then the last thing, the granting of the exception is in accordance with the purpose of this chapter and with the objectives of the general plan and elements thereof and the local coastal program land use plan. And so that's when I sort of dove in and found all these county codes, listed the purpose, the scope, commercial exclusions, uh, code 13.20.072, commercial exclusions identified below and number one the construction reconstruction demolition on a lot of record and i believe this is something that you should get legal counsel on but i believe you are on a lot of record um that would modify any area 2,000 square feet or less so maybe i i think you've got a lot of ground here mz um to, to really fight this, and I encourage all the listeners to join in, look for um, the information on the KSCO website, contact your supervisor, and flood them with your support, because the, the county supervisor is there to serve the people, and they have a lot of power. Manu Koenig has been shown the instruments, as a friend of mine said, and it all is about money and political threat to him and his own causes. So he's got to get clear in his mind, he is there to serve the public. And KSCO serves the public well by supporting critical thinking and allowing people to, to speak on different topics than the mainstream media will ever allow. And supports, KSCO supports disaster communication. It's everyone's go-to when there's something going on. Wow. Uh, like I said, if KSCO survives, we owe it to um, Becky Steinbrenner. No, you don't owe well, it to me. You owe it if to we all survive. Of your I, I'm too tired to fight. You will. I'm much will. too tired to fight. I'm sorry, you guys. Hey, well, that's MC, the end of the we've program. We've got to fight. We've got to fight. Well, this I'll, is I'll support the fighters, but I'm not going to be the guy who fights. Uh, so anyhow, it's, it's the end of the show. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank sorry, 